and they have just clinched their 14th major trophy since the arrival of their Russian billionaire owner, Roman Abramovich. 14 major trophies, five Premier League titles in that time, 10 different managers, and they haven't been the biggest spenders. City have actually spent more in that time. Take us back, Jamie. Could you have imagined 14 years on after his arrival, this would be a, a story of sustained success? No, I mean, a man like that came in, you're not quite sure what he's coming into football for, how long will he be interested in it? Is it something for two or three years? But I always remember when they initially came in, I remember the pre-season because we'd played them the last game. It was a, a, Ranieri was the manager, they won, got into the Champions League, then Abramovich came. And we played them the first game of the Abramovich era and they beat us 2-1 at Anfield. But I always remember that pre-season. And every day you'd come in, having your lunch at Melwood and you'd see breaking news, Chelsea have signed someone else, 20 million. 25, 15, these, these names were just coming from nowhere. And at that time, Man United were the dominant force. And ourselves and maybe Arsenal, Arsenal were better than us, but you're thinking, they're the team we need to catch to try and, try and win the league. As soon as Chelsea come and you see in that day in, day out, you're thinking, this is going to be really, really difficult to get. Sort of close to a Premier League title, and may even be over the next few years, make sure we're getting into the top four, because this, this is not going away. And you look at this, graphic now of, of Chelsea under Abramovich. That was a, a lot to take in. We just start at the top, really, now. And look at that. Now, you're talking about what we felt when Abramovich came in. I didn't think it was about Abramovich early on. It was more about Jose coming in, and you're thinking, they've just, after Ranieri getting second and the Champions League semi-final, straight away, you know, there's no messing about here. Mourinho comes in, at the time, you're thinking, looks like the best manager in the world. They're in London, they've got the most money. Everyone wants to go there, everyone wants to play for them. And they didn't just win two leagues, they just ran away with it. They won the league by March, April, hadn't they? And that's when I think everyone on football, under Mourinho, were thinking, domination. Were you feeling threatened at, at this time at Manchester United? Yeah, because Arsenal had won the league the year before, um, Jose's uh, title, first title. And I think that was probably the only point during my United career where I had a feeling we're not gonna win, we might not win the title again. And it was more of a Jose thing, really. When, when Sir Alex Ferguson, when a new manager come into England, Sir Alex Ferguson tried to dominate them. That, that was just a, a characteristic of his in terms of he dominated them in interviews, he tried to dominate them on the touchline. He, he adopted a different approach with Jose. I think he felt that this was a guy who, to be fair, could stand up to that type of thing. He was a master of PR and interviews, Jose, at that time. He was, he was unbelievable in terms of dealing with things. He sort of had that front foot about him. And he redefined, I think, how Sir Alex and maybe us as a team thought of a title in the sense that we always started pretty slowly. I could start quite slowly, knowing full well, even if we were seven or eight points behind, come Christmas, the other we'd always catch up, that we'd get stronger as the season went on. But in those two Jose Mourinho years, they went hard from the start and they never came back. And it just meant that everyone had to refocus about how you thought about a title, losing not hardly in the games, conceding very few goals difficult to be and it, it was certainly a, a, a time where I think United were in a little bit of a transition um, and it was, a, it was a, t a doubtful time for United and probably the most doubtful time that I had in my career at the club in the sense that would you win one again because they did look like a force and when Jose left it was a big sigh of relief I think because I think Sir Alex will have thought I've seen him off, I've seen him off, I needed him out of there because he was a massive strength for them. But Chelsea kept winning. They did. And that's the, the brilliant thing that we're going to get to now is this winning mentality that goes right through that club. It starts at the very top, how ruthless the owner is. And there's things about Chelsea, we've said for years, not just us, we don't like. Maybe at times the way they treat managers, the way they go about things. But I tell you what, that man sends a message right through that club that other clubs don't do. And they're very successful with it. And you can look at the graphic again and you can look at the times when they're the best team in the league. The thing I like about them is, you're talking about Mourinho going. So you think of there. So he's finished second two years on the bounce, but he still pick up an FA Cup and a League Cup. And then, we've said with Ranieri, OK, he wasn't Abramovich's man. Jose Mourinho is the type of character where he could fall out with an owner. So, yeah, it's ruthless. And then they're still sort of messing about with managers, Scolari, Hiddink, but they're still picking up trophies in another FA Cup. Then the A-lister comes back. And let's not forget, they're still biggest spenders, biggest wages as well. But Ancelotti comes in, wins the double. The second season, 
comes second. Just highlight that there under Ancelotti. And he's gone. And that's when I felt, wow, that is ruthless. Because Ancelotti's not Mourinho, where he's probably fighting with the owner. I don't think he's that type of person. To change him then, and then look. This is what I'm talking about, this winning mentality. I don't think every club's got it. I think Manchester United have still got it now. We criticise what's happened since Ferguson. They're still picking up trophies. Won one last year, won one this year. Still another final. They still find a way to win. So even when Theus Boas, Di Matteo, Benitez, these people are coming in, look where they're finishing. Sixth, third, third. Still win a Champions League. Still win an FA Cup. Still win a Europa League. But the, the most impressive thing for me now is let's not forget City are now in the game. And I felt that when City came along, the, a better version, or basically the Chelsea with more money. And there was this talk of we're going to do things differently. We're going to act like Chelsea. I bet they wish they had Chelsea's winning mentality. They won two leagues, City, because they were the best team in those seasons. But they don't pick up the trophies they do. You look at that. Now, and the spend when Jose came back. So we're looking after, so third, first, tenth, first in these seasons. That's when City are throwing money at it. This has now become an unbelievable business. To get that and that first twice could be an FA Cup, another double going forward. And look at then the net spend. This is not Chelsea 10 years before, blitzing everyone. This is an unbelievable business model, what they've got now. Selling players, buying players. How long they can keep that going, I don't know, with the Manchester clubs going. But what he's done at that club should not be underestimated.